evening, everyone, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann. This is Football and Nonsense. <laughs> And a happy Wednesday to you all, hump day. I hope it's treating you well. We are midway through the last week of November. It is my birthday week here on the Fan Show. And what that means is that once you reach past a certain point, that uh, you don't really celebrate just the day. You kind of get the whole week. Uh, Now, my birthday is Friday the 1st, so obviously I would get uh, a good day to celebrate on the day if I so chose. But, you know, I don't have shows on Friday, unless I do a Friday nonsense special, which I'm I'm not going to do this time. I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have fun that day. Uh, start a new job on Monday. Won't conflict with any of the current scheduling that we have for the show. But hey, that tour is not gonna pay for itself, and I might even need to pay a little bit uh, to go back to school to get my bachelor's degree. But uh, that's not of your concern, that's of mine. Of course, if you'd like to make it your concern, you can always visit teespring.com slash thefanshow, visit the official fan show merch store, and go ahead and place an order for a t-shirt, a hoodie, or one of each, a variety of colors. We've got all different sizes, and they are comfy. I tell you what, those hoodies, super soft. They They really are. Plus, for the rest of the week and all the month of November, if you make a purchase, 25% of your order will go towards Wounded Warrior. And that is the, the charity of the month. Next month will be something different. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm a big Toys for Tots guy. I'm also a big Humane Society guy. I donated to the Humane Society during the hurricane relief hurricane harvey that happened down in houston all those displaced pets to be honest uh if if it were up to me every pet that i saw that needed adopted or rescued i'd do it (laughs) and and my wife is the same way she's like we need a bigger place to live so basically right now how it is is that the second that we get our forever home as we call it a house because we've lived in apartments this whole time once we get a house then we can start like adopting, and that's when I'm going to hit up the guys from Tanked and Animal Cribs on Animal Planet. I am addicted to those two shows. So that's uh, that's kind of the state of things right now for me in the fan show. So this is my birthday week. I've been trying to assemble sort of an all-star fun cast for this week. Still waiting to hear back from Pat McAfee, so you guys can uh, harass him on Twitter if you want. Be like, hey, we need to be on the fan show. We got all excited. Uh, you know, let's do this thing. But, you know, um, sometimes continued communication is half the battle. Uh, He messaged me uh, on Twitter and said, you know, hey, what's up? And I said, you know, here's here's the rundown. I do Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. What works best for you? And uh, now I'm waiting to hear back again. I realize he's a very busy man, but, you know, this is one of the the toughest parts is that you can initiate a conversation, but it's following through and and getting that info that can be the the toughest part of the battle sometimes. And uh, like I said, you know, it's something that I... I'm used to, not that I'm used to like getting rejected or stood up, but I realize that these things happen and you overcome, you adapt, you move on. So uh, last night had Craig the Leg on. It was great to catch up with him, former indoor football kicker, a member of the Spokane Empire. And we talked about the kicking woes, right? The Blair Walsh blues that the Seahawks are suffering from. His thoughts on, you know, waiting for that phone call, wanting to get that opportunity to go and kick at that next level. But, you know, there's so much politics and sports. That was a great conversation. You can go and check that out. Uh, It is available for your listening pleasure in podcast form, iTunes, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio, as well as, of course, uh, replays on WBLZ. And you can listen live. Uh, hopefully you are right now on either Spreaker.com, where you can also find the podcast form there, or thefanshow.com, which has an episode archive. Everything that I have ever done here on The Fan Show is there, except for, I think, like the first 20 episodes. I don't know how far back it goes, but this is episode 244, 
episode 300, I believe, if I calculated right, is projected for the week after WrestleMania. So that should be a lot of fun. Now, I know that uh, 244 is the official count. We're probably a good handful over that just because of the different specials that I've done. I don't count, you know, the, the round tables or the Friday nonsense episodes. But if it happens on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, it counts as an official episode here on the Fan Show. And of those official episodes, number 300, the week after WrestleMania 34, which SmackDown Live happened last night. So I guess without further ado or any more delay, let's go ahead and hit those headlines. And the headlines are that uh, SmackDown Live happened last night, and it was pretty much just formality. Like I said, this is sort of the downtime for the WWE, and AJ Styles had his two-on-one handicap match against the Singh brothers. Uh, of course, Jinder Mahal gets his rematch for the WWE title at uh, Clash of Champions, and uh, right now it looks like Bobby Roode is going to be the man that steps up to challenge Baron Corbin for his United States title. Now, I said that last night that I would like to see Ty Dillinger, but his time will come. Uh, Bobby Roode, I think they need to put a title on him and then possibly change his character, maybe turn him back to heel in order to uh, preserve the Bobby Roode that we came to love uh, in NXT. Speaking of NXT, if you don't know, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, but if you don't, uh, I've been binge watching NXT from its very beginning because NXT... Uh, when it started was something very different than the NXT that we know now. When NXT first started, it was a glorified tough enough that was WWE. It was one hour. And I'm not saying that tough enough before wasn't WWE, but they did it on like MTV USA, the WWE network. This was like what 205 live is. So it was uh, recorded after or before one of the events, I think SmackDown probably, and there were eight rookies and eight pros, and they were competing in different elimination challenges. Now, these weren't guys that had zero experience like Tough Enough. These were guys that had been training at FCW, and uh, now we're looking to sort of get some time in the spotlight to see how well they would do. And it was awful. I mean, it was entertaining for the first couple of weeks. And guys like Daniel Bryan got their start there. Wade Barrett, even even Fandango got his start in the last of what was the um, gimmick style NXT. And so I was so curious. I was like, how did we go from Tough Enough NXT to the NXT that we know now, which is like basically its own culture, its own cult collective of wrestling and wrestling fans. And I got to tell you the transition, it, it was subtle and you didn't know it was happening until it happened because they entered into their fifth season, which is NXT redemption. That's where I'm at right now. And they start out the same way that they had the first four seasons. We have these rookies with their pros. You guys are earning a spot to be the next breakout star. And then all of a sudden, like six episodes in, it just starts to sort of lose what's going on and after the 100th episode they say yeah we have a big announcement coming up and matt striker who is the host relinquishes his uh his duties to william regal who now is a a huge part of nxt and uh he says yeah we're gonna we're gonna change things up and so it's no longer a gimmick it was an actual thing and and uh, i'm curious to see how how much further it grows and changes to get to uh, where we are today so if you have some time on your hands if you want to binge watch something nxt on the wwe network is where it's at i tell you if you can make it through the first 3 seasons props to you <laughs> it's it was painful so smackdown live uh, they're they're getting things set there seems to be a women's invasion happening on both shows not really sure what direction they're going to head with that but it was a eh, episode last night count down the clash of champions january of course the royal rumble which will be another joint pay-per-view and that will officially kick off the countdown to wrestlemania and new orleans uh this next uh, april uh, 2018 so uh, as far as football, though, oh, Giants, oh, Giants. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about how, you know, they had decided to go ahead and make Geno Smith their starter, and Eli Manning had elected to not start ending his streak. 
but there's been so much backlash. I mean, we're talking Tennessee when they hired Greg Schiano backlash, except for I don't see the Giants changing anything. Um, you know, they're going to stick to their guns. But one thing that I tweeted out that nobody is touching, and the reason nobody is touching this tweet with a 10-foot pole is because they know it's true, is that if Geno Smith was Colin Kaepernick, people would be singing a completely different tone. And there was a few people that responded to me later on today that said, you know, well, in the New York media, absolutely people would be acting differently. But the fact is, is that it's not Kaepernick, it's Geno Smith. And we know that what he brings to the table, and that's not much. So I feel bad for Gino, uh, but man, some people look like flat out hypocrites right now with uh, <laughs> just and, and not only in that regard, but the fact that people said that Eli had, was one of the most overrated quarterbacks for the last decade. And here they think that this is the most unceremonious thing that could ever happen to what some believe is a future Hall of Famer. I think two rings gets him in the Hall of Fame. I don't know if it'll be a first ballot. I really don't. It's going to depend on who else is part of that class with him, especially at the quarterback position. From his draft class, it could be very tough. Big Ben, Phillip Rivers. But uh, as far as um, him, I don't know. I think the rings will do it. I think the rings will put him over the top. Uh, His streak of starts will, will probably be the difference maker. But man... Has there ever been a more sort of meh, meh eh, quarterback than Eli Manning? I don't know. I really don't. And the comparison between him and Philip Rivers is astounding. Uh, the people that say if you put two rings on Philip Rivers, he is without a doubt a Hall of Famer. And yet here we're talking about how the two rings should be enough to put Eli Manning in the Hall of Fame. Sit on that one. Philip Rivers doesn't have any rings. Phenomenal quarterback. They say he should definitely be a Hall of Famer, but man, it would seal the deal if he had even one ring. Eli Manning has two, and he had two before his brother Peyton had two. He's 2-0 two and oh in Super Bowls, and people are still like, is it going to be enough? So think on that when, when you think about Eli Manning. And I'm not saying that this is any reason to, to kind of relax on him getting benched I still think that that's kind of BS but nonetheless here we are we're at week 13 in the NFL and teams uh you know the show must go on they can't just you know do things for players as much as we would like them to Derek Jeter had a farewell tour Peyton Manning had what we knew was going to be a a farewell season and so did a few other players who announced their retirement either mid-season or before a playoff run and They're touching stories, yes, but the teams, you know, they're still going to be there long after those players are gone, and they need to start planning for that future now. I don't think Ben McAdoo's the future whatsoever. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is the future for the 49ers. He will get the start this weekend against the Chicago Bears, so my birthday game, we'll get to see Jimmy G. I went and picked him up in every single fantasy league that I was in last night (laughs) because I got that excited about it. Uh, The leagues that... I'm well out of the playoff picture and just playing because I'm the guy that will still set my lineup every week and and make sure that uh, I have guys in place to play. Uh, I will probably start him just for fun. But there's two leagues that I'm I'm playoff bound in, and it's for seeding right now. And probably the best matchup is the one between me and Mr. Connor Ferguson. I mentioned that last night. And how uh, it's, uh, I I think it's the battle for first place because he's in first place right now and I'm in fifth because there's a a four-way tie between uh, the second and fifth place teams. And because of my, I think, either points for um, or points allowed, I'm in fifth instead of second. But if I beat him, I wonder if I become first place and if he gets pushed down to fifth. I don't know, but it's a game that I want to win. I don't need to win, but I would like to win. It's very competitive between me and Connor. He's, he's a good guy. But, uh, yeah, other than that, in the world of the NFL, really not much. The Infinity War trailer came out. That was exciting. Oh, my God. DC, you just need to hang it up and call it quits. And I haven't seen Justice League yet, but I haven't heard great things. Like, I have a lot of comic book friends, a lot of nerd friends. I'm a nerd myself. I've always been Team Marvel as opposed to Team DC, although I will give DC this nod. When it comes to villains... 
the Joker has got to be one of the single greatest villains of all time. And really anything, any storytelling, the Joker is just such a fantastic villain. He really is. And the different ways that he's been portrayed and he still, that villain is amazing. Well done, DC. Uh, Batman, one of my favorite superheroes, but the rest of the DC world, <coughs> I just, I can't get on board with. I really can't. Marvel, though. Marvel gave me Wolverine, the Hulk, Iron Man. I, I mean, it just, it gives you so much, and I love it. I can't wait for Infinity Wars. I'm more excited about Infinity Wars than I am The Last Jedi, and apparently that's blasphemy, according to my friend Funk. But it's all right. So that trailer dropped. Go check it out. Go react. Go watch it for the 10,000th the time, because I will after the show is over. And then Matt Lauer got fired from uh, the Today Show or Good Morning America, whichever one it is that he's on. I, I don't I don't get up that early to watch. But it shocked me because this is like a media darling, so, somebody that everybody knew, that everyone, when Matt Lauer spoke, you listened. And now he's gone for allegations, right? allegedly having a button under his desk that locked women in his office. Like there's a lot of creepy stuff coming out of the woodwork right now. And man, does the media work fast. So here as me, someone speaking to you who's interested in the field of media, I, I tweeted out something that is a, a joke, but in real reality, all seriousness is that, you know, I'm wanting to pursue a career in uh, media and slash journalism and it looks like it's a scary place right now just because it seems like no one is safe and and people will be the first to tell you you know if you don't have anything to hide then you don't have anything to worry about <laughs> no that's not how the world works at all i don't know where you got that from but that's not <laughs> no i'm sorry <laughs> but no it's it's not how it works and uh so here's me thinking Wow, scary place. Is this really what I want to do? And then also me. Hey, look at all the job openings. <laughs> ESPN laid off 150 more people, not the people at the front lines, uh, those that host shows. So unfortunately, Jameel Hill and Trey Wingo and Stephen A. Smith are still safe. And that's unfortunate because there are so many other talented journalists and media people out there that should be in their place. And that is, of course, my complete biased and personal feelings on the subject. But these are people behind the lines, production, media, content, tech, all that, uh, that have been laid off. So happy trails to them. You're, this will be the best day of the rest of your life because nobody wants to really be a part of ESPN right now. I see it as a, a flaming ship going down. And so with that, uh, Aaron Coscarelli was... Uh, available to be on the show this evening and i want to thank her for that so we pre-recorded our conversation this morning it was such a treat to have her back on the show great conversation so don't go anywhere we've got more of the fan show my conversation with the lovely aaron coscarelli coming up right after this you're listening to the fan show your home for all things football and nonsense my special guest tonight farouk farouk welcome he's no expert but here's the thing Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am. But the 1% do, they yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons, like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy. Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like, Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. The Bonnie to Marcus Stokes Clyde. They steal our hearts for 30 minutes a day live on Twitter. It is the lovely Erin Coscarelli. <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you doing? Thank you for having me on again. I was so excited this morning when I woke up, got to talk 
get to talk some football with you. Oh, stop it. You guys get to talk football every day to much more important people. But nonetheless, I appreciate you being on, <laughs> especially the week of my birthday. I was trying to put together a great lineup this week. I had a friend of mine who was a kicker. We talked to the kicking woes of the NFL yesterday. And then, of course, oh. I wanted to have you and or Mark on the show because you're both, you know, good uh, friends of mine in the business. But, yeah, it's been uh, yeah been quite the season of the NFL for 2017 but before we do that Thanksgiving how was it for you did you have a good one I did it was nice well you know we worked uh yeah. <laughs> we do the show every day Monday through Thursday uh 4 p.m pacific time we go live um and then we're off Friday so it was nice because I got to eat a ton of food Thursday night after work and I got to sleep in uh, and just dream about good football for the weekend. <laughs> so it was it was nice. It was relaxing, and of course we had some good games. So uh, I mean, so many things to talk about right now with what we even saw on Thursday. In fact, uh, yesterday we had Trey Boston on the show, who is a Chargers DB, and they quite handedly took care of the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. And just seeing what's going on with the Cowboys and how much. You're obviously realizing Zeke Elliott means to that offense. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of frustration, especially right now in the NFC East, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And it was funny because a lot of the talk on the show recently, I, I know several Packer fans, and of course they're feeling the Aaron Rodgers blues right now, but they also mm – -hmm feel that Mike McCarthy is only he only has the resume that he does because of Aaron Rodgers but yesterday I brought up I was like you know I can understand people questioning how Mike McCarthy is still the guy in Green Bay but how is Jason Garrett still the guy in Dallas uh, he doesn't oh. have nearly the resume that McCarthy does so I don't know if you guys yeah. have discussed that I know it's a it's a touchy subject with Mark there he's uh <laughs> That is an understatement. Mark is a diehard Cowboys fan. And, you know, for being a Cowboys fan, he talks about it uh, pretty practically. And he has mentioned the same thing with Jason Garrett and the uh, questionable decisions that he's made, and, uh, you know, why they seem to be struggling right now. That is that is definitely uh, a bone of contention for Mark, that's for sure. Is there another guy that Mark's mentioned that he would rather have as the head coach than Garrett? Because that's that's kind of the next step. You know, you can say all you want about how much a guy shouldn't be there, but who is the guy that should be there? Well, see, that's so tough to say because even though Jason Garrett is, quote, unquote, the head coach, I feel like uh, the big decisions um, personnel-wise and uh, scheme-wise really is uh, – is the head co uh, is Jerry Jones. So, I mean, you, you have to have a head coach who's strong in conviction and, and makes good decisions, but ultimately he has to answer to Jerry Jones, the GM and the owner there. So I don't know who the right guy is. I'm not, Mark hasn't really uh, mentioned it, but you, you think about how difficult it probably is for Jason Garrett, who may have ideas of his own, but ultimately the head honcho is making all the decisions behind closed doors yeah it's a tough gig so, that not many right? people are, are best suited for except for uh, a very fine few but uh <laughs> i i wish the, the best for for mark and his fandom and, and his cowboys to see if they can <laughs> write this because yeah the i mean the the chargers are probably the hottest team in the afc right now but the cowboys you know they have a tough test this Thursday night, if they want to even still stand a chance, which I don't know if, if they do or not realistically, but we'll see. Uh, do you Black Friday? I feel like you're someone who Black Fridays. Oh, that is such a great question because <laughs> typically I would avoid the malls, but can I tell you my online shopping game has severely improved thanks to Amazon Prime and all of those Ooh. things. This is not sponsored by Amazon, by the way, but <laughs> no, um, you know, I tr it's, 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 that's exactly it. Yeah, Friday, I didn't have work. I got to sleep in. So my brain and my game for shopping online was at, in full effect. I did a little Black – how about you? Do you do a little Black Friday? I, I did that? Black Friday once. Of course, this was – this is coming from someone <laughs> who's done their stints in retail. In fact, the first – one of the first jobs <laughs> I ever had was uh, uh -huh. I was fresh out of high school, and it was Toys R Us, and it was the nice! year – 
the year that they launched for the first time ever, the Nintendo Wii, the Xbox, oh, and the PlayStation all in the same year, and I was the electronics guy. So the the, oh. the stop, the I was the last stop in in the store. It started at one door, went all the way around, and then ended at me. So it was a madhouse for me, and I was like, I'm never doing this again. And then I did it two years later at Best Buy, but. Oh, um, I, I have gone out and shopped one Black Friday, and it was because um, my mom really wanted uh, one of those three-in-one record cassette and CD players because she's she's a woman that has you know all three now, and oh. and they had this great deal at Kohl's, and I went and I knew that it wasn't going to be like a hot item, so I, I grabbed one. But yeah, it, it's madness. I'll stay at home, and um, you know I'll I'll do the online thing like you, but. It only takes once, and I know that there's some people that that's like almost part of their Thanksgiving tradition is to Black Friday shop. I don't know how they can do it. I really don't. I know, and sometimes I, I – first of all, I was never I, – I never really thought that there there was anything behind it till I started doing it. And then I now I feel like if I don't get in on it, I'm, I've like failed at life. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, Christmas is here now. I didn't shop at all. It's so hard when you cover football for a living because right now we don't – I mean, we don't get any off time. It's like all hands on deck. And, I mean, your free time, you're going home, you're watching the game, you know, or you're talking about it or – so shopping during the football season seems – it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem right. But nonetheless, you have to make your parents and your family happy. So ultimately, I do I do shop. Well, and I know a lot of people that go out to Black Friday for themselves. They're like, I, I really want a bigger TV, so I'm going to do that Black Friday for myself. And that, <laughs> that seems like one of the most, you know, just backwards – ways of thinking ever but i guess you know if it's if it's a deal and if you can brave the lines and the crowd and actually live to tell about it then by all means but <laughs> you brought up something yeah. that i was very curious about because i know for nfl players it's something that is is part of their lifestyle too you know when it comes to holidays they're probably going to be working but for you guys uh doing media journalism um, I assume that your families probably understand that it's the nature of the business, but are you guys almost, do you breathe like a sigh of relief when you don't have to go and be the person that everybody asks their sports questions to at a big family gathering? Uh, like, am I happy that I don't have to do that? Or... Yeah, you almost get saved by by the job that you don't have to go oh, and right. be the, the yes. go-to. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you try to balance it because, of course... It, it's every every year you essentially, you essentially either miss Thanksgiving or you you know or you don't have much of a New Year's Eve you know you just figure out you have to be with really understanding you know significant others or parents or so on and so forth. Even my fiance, he's leaving town. Fortunately, uh, I'm not able to go with him. You know, he's going on he's going with his family, which he hasn't been able to the last four years because he's been here. Unfortunately, I can't go. Um, I have to stay here. So, but you know what? It's the the perks of the job are so awesome. It doesn't feel like work. I'll take talking football, covering sports, and that's my day to day job where I get to meet cool people and interview people and tell interesting stories. Um, I'll take that over doing holidays once a day. I mean, once a year. I'll take that any day, any time of the year. So. It beats it. <laughs> it's probably better than being that family member that's really heavily involved in politics because that, that can be Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. I have those I have those family members that get a little uh, curious about my political affiliation and they want to lecture me. So it's nice to have an excuse to have to not endure that, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, but, holidays, I tell you, which, you know, uh, no. it, it is – Christmas time, my birthday being December 1st, my family has always kind of marked oh. that as like the, the start of the countdown to Christmas. The tree will go up that weekend and, and we'll get we'll start switching over to, to Christmas music, which is kind of a hot button topic in itself. Some people hate it. Some people love it. My wife, I guess, actually found a study that said people that listen to Christmas music uh, are actually happier day to day. Christmas music to you, uh, like is it... Does it depend? Okay. Do you have like a, a special playlist? Do you enjoy it? What's, what's your thoughts on, on Christmas music? So I am that 
really annoying person that's <laughs> typically when they wake up in the morning really happy. I I drive people crazy. It's annoying. <laughs> I I admit it. I'm right there with them. Um, so I love Christmas. I love Christmas music. I love Christmas decorations. I love they have down here. I don't know if you've ever been to the Grove, but in Los Angeles. They have an outdoor mall. It's called The Grove. It's in West Hollywood. It is like Disneyland for adults, can I tell you? They have <laughs> snow. They have a Christmas tree lighting. They've made it this cool thing now where they have, like, Christmas concerts. And that that is me to a T. I love Christmas. I mean, I love the music. I love the whole aspect of – and people say, too, L.A., that don't, we don't really change seasons. And that's true. There's not really a big change, obviously. We may change – our degree of, of coldness goes down from 75 to 65, maybe. Um, so when Christmas hits, for, for me as an LA native, it's like, oh, this the seasons are changing. So that's where I get excited because it, it just it feels to us like a, a season has, has, has shifted, if you will. So Yeah, and I definitely feel for the people that work retail because they have the Christmas oh. music going on 24-7 and they're not oh, working yeah. their normal you know, eight-hour shifts anymore. They're there from like open to close. So I, I right. imagine you can only hear so many versions of Santa Claus is coming to town. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think it, it's still something that it marks what the season is and it's, you know, it's festive and it's it helps people get into a, a brighter, happier time of year when you know the days are shorter and it's getting colder and that's kind of hard to do so i appreciate right. christmas music i have my playlist uh it's got you know uh, a lot of different songs a lot of covers of songs um there's a, a bon jovi one on there and there's a uh, you know a few other rock versions i can't hear Ooh. carol of the bells unless it's the trans-siberian orchestra oh, version. for sure i love that i love um this is embarrassing to admit but i love me some Kenny G. <laughs> I am so not ashamed to admit it. I love me some Kenny G music. Just the, and the reason why I say that too is because I love um, the instrument, the instrumental music. So. Do you guys have any uh, special like secret Santas going on there at NFL Network every Christmas? <laughs> it seems like it would be chaos, but it would be a lot of fun with the personalities you guys have there. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. We actually do it sort of more on camera where, and it's not necessarily an actual real gift, but if we did it through the entire NFL network, oh my gosh, there's too many, <laughs> there's too many gifts to get, too many people to organize. It would be chaos. Yeah, I could Especially imagine. Especially right now. <laughs> yeah. But well, that's good, though. I'm glad that you guys at least have some fun with it. And, of course, you know, with uh, the NFL, they always seem to do some spin with, with – uh, marketing and merchandising ugly sweaters and then i i forget if they've done it recently but fox used to go all out with its production as far as the the timeouts were actually christmas lights around oh. the uh the score up in the corner of the tv but i yeah. can't recall if i saw them do that last year but yeah it's uh it's great money for the nfl when christmas time rolls around it's like the the most perfect storm that they could ask for <laughs> Right. Well, football and, and the holidays, it goes hand in hand, just like with Thanksgiving. So it's a yeah. natural comparison. It's a nat They go together like mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. And luckily for me, you know, uh, ha being a December baby, I always get a, a football, you know, weekend. And uh, of course, hopefully my, my 49ers aren't on a bye week, but I get sort of a, a birthday gift by seeing Jimmy G start <gasps> a full game oh my against the Bears. Now, I know that oh, no. he, he got eclipsed by, by all the Eli Manning stuff yesterday, but know, let's talk about this. Jimmy G, the era in, for the 49ers has officially begun your guys' reaction to that when you heard the news i was ecstatic i am so ready to see him play now i'm on a show every sunday called game day view alongside mark is took and one of the gentlemen we have on the couch is ike taylor longtime db played with the steelers no longer and um he and i would go back and forth because you know we would this was this was dating back to when they traded for him you know they asked and he signed with the niners i thought <clears throat> I was like, you know, let's get him out there. Let's see what he can do. And he made a great point. You know, the, the Niners aren't in it right now. Why put him out there so he could get hurt? And, you know, he's clearly the uh, quarterback of the future. 
Um, so why, why put them in any type of situation where, uh, you know, you could damage that. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm a true through and through fan of the game. So for me, getting to see Jimmy G, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo now with the Niners, uh, we're at least getting to see what we need to do for him. Kind yeah. of like what Sean McVay ended up figuring out with Jared Goff putting the right pieces around him. You know, I, I was actually fascinated, too. I was wondering, Jimmy G being behind uh, Tom Brady for two, three years, do you almost take him and, and go, now what do they do in uh, New England that we can apply to our room, our quarterback room? So I was wondering if – I was just curious. Like, I wonder if he has – if he holds some – really interesting intel that the Niners front office want to take and maybe apply to their own practice, their I, own film rooms. You know what I mean? I think I you that almost was... have to uh, because right? the reality is, is that they said that Harbaugh integrated a lot of the Nevada offense for Kaepernick. And that's what made him so successful those couple of years that he was with him. But, you know, we've, we've seen this before where there's a Tom Brady backup. And, I mean, Brett Favre had so many backups in his career. And a lot of those guys actually went on to have really good careers, Matt Hasselbeck being one of them. But with Tom yeah. Brady, that has not been the case. And so now I've been the guy that says that I think Tom Brady is a great quarterback, but I wonder how much of his success relies on him being paired up with Bill Belichick. We may never know because we saw Matt Castle, Jacoby Brissett, go on to other teams and they did not do very well and so now all the pressure is on Jimmy now as a 49ers fan I want him to be as successful as possible even if that means that the whole system Tom Brady thing kind of becomes a a more irrelevant point but you got to be nervous that this could turn into be you know another Matt Castle and I definitely don't want that so yeah I think you ask him I I think you you take notes and you say you know uh, help me help you like how do we how do we do this right for you here in in San Francisco bingo bingo and uh I mean, what better team to start against than the Bears, coached by John Fox, who gave up, what was it? They had three points against the Eagles. So I think if there's a time <clears throat> to take a look at what they have and what to plan for for the future is to start them now, week 13. Yeah. Yeah, and I think C.J. Beathard was a, a great guy, um, definitely a, a young talent that can possibly do some good things uh, with, with another team. But he was – you know, the the tackling dummy, and he was tough as nails through those first five starts that he had. But, yeah, I think now, you know, the, there's always been a bigger picture, and that went from Kirk Cousins to now hopefully Jimmy Garoppolo because I'd hate to see mm-hmm. them, you know, make another change. But uh, the future, at least for now, looks bright. Uh, and, you know, his 30 seconds out there managed to uh, get a first down and then throw <laughs> a touchdown. So I'm, I'm happy as a clam. <laughs> I know. He looked really good. So hopefully that continues and yeah. then we can, we can vote Jimmy G uh, as the Niners quarterback of the future for 2018. Definitely looking forward to that. Now, of course, as I mentioned, uh, there was the Eli benching yesterday and I'm sure this was yep. a media frenzy for you guys. What, what's been the initial takeaway in the feelings now that we've had this to chew on for a little bit here? Now that all the emotions have settled and, you know, people finally had the chance to digest it. Well, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. And, of course, we on the show, NFL Blitz, basically takes all the information and in our show digests it and take and says, what does this information actually mean and what is the reaction to it? We had Sean O'Hara, uh, who played with Eli Manning for, I want to say, seven seasons, won a Super Bowl with him. He was devastated. He was heartbroken, and, and rightfully so, of course. This was a guy that uh what sorry my dogs are excited right now um this, this was a uh this was a quarterback that led his team for 200 and straight uh games which through and through through thick and thin and i and come on guys quiet i am so sorry my dogs are <laughs> oh, it's okay. like a mailman comes home or my fiance comes home they lose their mind but um anywho so uh, I personally, I don't have, I'm not a Giants fan. Uh, obviously, I never played with Eli Manning. I find it to be more of a business decision. Why mm-hmm. the team is 2-9. and nine. It, it, Maybe they have plans of either 
trading Eli or keeping him as uh, some type of opportunity down the road to get some picks from him. I don't know. I mean, I think he's going to be 37, so he's not terribly young. But uh, to me, it's a business decision. I think the, 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 the biggest shock is that he's essentially getting benched for Geno Smith. But they need to look to the future. And right now, uh, the Giants aren't doing very well. They're, you know, this is unprecedented. So they need to figure things out. And like you had mentioned earlier, Ben McAdoo might be uh, the sacrificial lamb and making decisions that aren't sitting well clearly with the New York fan base. But the Giants are trying to figure out what to do right now. And maybe it's starting with the, with the quarterback. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was... Definitely, you know, you have mixed feelings about it. Obviously, when you're a fan of a team that one guy has been your guy for so long, um, there it, it comes in waves of emotions. You you wonder, you know, like can can we do better? Should we, you know, make a change? What what happens? It, but he's he's gotten us so far and and done so much. But that's not going to be the case every year. I mean, Brett Favre didn't have great years in Green Bay. Steve Young didn't have great years in San Francisco, but he was still, you know, they were the guys. And I, I understand yep. that. I feel for Giants fans. I really do. And it, it's sad to see a, another era sort of come to an end, which is what yeah. this is. And mm. here on the fan show, um, we have the list of fan show, which is like the list of Jericho. If you're not a wrestling fan, that's uh, basically uh, a year round naughty list. And I wanted to know oh. if there was anyone that you could think of that deserves to be on such a list uh, as far as what you've <laughs> seen either recently or throughout the uh, NFL season. Well, I mean, we could all pick on Sean McDermott for benching Tyrod Taylor, uh, <laughs> which I, you know, I, I'm right there with uh, with everybody else think, scratching their head. Even LaShawn McCoy after the game goes, it felt normal having it back. They put out Nathan Peterman way too early, a la the five picks that he had. Um, and a lot of people, you know, even still in New York, new, other New York fans were just wondering, what the heck are they doing? They I think they're the, the sixth seed. <clears throat> I don't think they are now. I think um, the shockingly enough, the Ravens are the sixth seed in the AFC. But, you know, you got to put Sean McDermott on the naughty list because at the end of the day, I know maybe he's getting um, advice <clears throat> from his GM in the front office, but your team is still in it. Why are you <laughs> making a switch at quarterback when I know he had a bad game? He had 56 passing yards. I think he only had one interception when they had that – a uh, game against the Saints defense that, by the way, is really freaking good right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sean McDermott, shame on you. You go on the naughty list. You can redeem yourself. But right now, you know, you're getting some coal for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I think we actually gave Sean McDermott the uh, butt fumble award for last week for that coaching decision. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's on everybody's yeah. list right now. And uh, uh, and on my list, uh, as far as people I have yet to get on the show, is Mr. Dave Damashek. So if you can whisper into his ear sometime that, hey, there's this really fun show that you should go be on, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. But, uh, Aaron, I can't thank you enough for, for being on the show, especially the, the week of my birthday. You're always a oh pleasure to gosh. have on. Happy happy birthday. Well, I love coming on your show, and I will definitely pass the word along to my fellow NFL Network colleagues, especially Dave Damashek, because he needs to come on this show. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, I want to have James Coe back. He was a hoot, and then Adam Rank. But more more to talk wrestling with Adam, because he's, he's a big wrestling oh, fan, and I, I know, know. That we would have fun with that. But hopefully Mark is on. <laughs> tomorrow but uh, you guys oh, are good. great I, I love what you do there on nfl mm. blitz so enjoy you know if we don't talk between uh now and christmas on the show then have a very merry christmas and uh Thank we'll you. we'll see what 2018 holds you got it all right thanks for having me on and i'll talk to you soon okay happy all right. birthday thank you so much you take care <laughs> okay. of yourself okay bye once again that was aaron coscarelli of nfl blitz and the nfl network such a delight to have her on the show. I, I, I swear, it's probably one of the favorite conversations that I've had. She's only been on twice, but I feel like every time that she's on, we could talk for the full hour of the show. And it's always just, it's fun. It's not awkward. It's not uncomfortable. It's just fun, you know, just people, you know, shooting the stuff and being like, hey, how about this? Oh, you know what? Such and such. <laughs> but thank you, Aaron Coscarelli. Congratulations on her recent engagement. Uh, that was one thing that I meant to say, but, the, you know, she was uh, pressed for time. 
didn't want to be rude. I thank her for that. Uh, I'm just glad that she made time to be on the show. It's been a fun birthday week so far. So after this commercial break, we've got a butt fumble award and another name to add to the list of fan show. You just made the list! So don't you touch that theoretical dial. We'll be right back after this. This is The Sheet. It's me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw that Sky hates him. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I got to run. And only in Alabama that could happen, I have to say. They're so good, man. (laughs) They would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision-based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. Give it to him. Kudos. I'm clapping like a golfer. Very good, Johnny. I'm proud of you. Wow. You guys agree on something again? I'm very impressed. Have you ever had a bad week? You know, just you walk outside, step in a puddle. Like, right when you walk outside, I mean, how's your puddle right outside the house? Are you, you stand on the curb and somebody drives by and splashes water up on you? Or it's just raining on you, not anyone else? I, I will tell you, before you go any further... I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. This is Nick Ficarelli, the mad scientist of sports. Join me and Dr. D. Derek Jones live every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific, for the mad scientist sports lab. The big into which... The experiments on the chalkboard, and the guest subjects will be rolling in. Mad Scientist Sports Lab, only on WBLZ Sports, where we got balls. Doug Peffer painting and pressure washing. He has over 30 years of painting experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial, or residential. Doug Peffer covers it all. Is your house looking ugh? We'll call on Doug. Doug Peffer painting and pressure washing, 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Check out Thursday Night Tailgate, where NFL legends live on. We bring you five NFL legends every week, sharing their stories and insights, plus our spotlight on the positive. Hear which players are doing great things in their communities. Now on WBLZ Sports Talk Radio and WBLZSports.com. back and we're going to finish out this Wednesday the only way we know how we've got a butt fumble award to give out as well as a name to add to the list so first up how about the list of fan show and I know that Aaron had a a worthy nominee to be added to the list and Sean McDermott because he went from benching Tyrod Taylor and getting humiliated to putting him back in the game they still lost but then he started the next week and they won against the Chiefs of all things and that seems like a, a very good candidate to be added to the list but he got the butt fumble award a week ago and that might be punishment enough for him we're we're moving on we're in the now I think this week really it's got to be Tennessee not the Tennessee fans and not the Tennessee Titans I'm talking about Tennessee who recently hired Greg Schiano and then just as quickly as he could say sure why oh he's gone because the uproar of the Tennessee fans now look I'm a fan Okay, and and I understand when things rub me the wrong way. Yes, I want my voice to be heard, but at the same time, to to what extent? Because it it's not as if they said, "Hey, we're considering this person as a candidate. What do you think?" And then you give your feedback, and they're like, "Okay, we'll ixnay that idea." They had actually offered him the job, had announced that he was going to be hired as the head coach, and then the fans kicked back, and now they're like, "Uh." 
looks like this wasn't such a great idea, Greg. I guess we're going to have to go ahead and say no on that. So they pulled out. They pulled the offer. And it just it's humiliating because this is the action of a poorly run program. Plain and simple. That's what it is. So do, am I defending Greg Schiano? No, I'm not. What, whatever happened with him and the negative stuff and the allegations is is that business. And, of course, if I was a fan of Tennessee, if he was hired and that was the, the dark cloud looming over him, I might be a little uncomfortable, too. But this comes down to the organization and the fact that they didn't really run it by the fans first. And now they're listening to them as if they run the program. And, yeah, I'm, I'm a WWE critic. I really am. I wish that they would listen to the fans more. But sometimes when it comes to business decisions, you have to make sure that you're doing what's best for business and not what the fans want. Because sometimes they are in completely different directions and on different pages. But majority of the time, you can come back and you can meet in the middle. So for Tennessee to let the fans kind of run the show, and now every other candidate's kind of like, well, if that happened to him, what I, what, what might happen to me? This is a dangerous time for people. Any male over the age of 40 is uh, could have something come out of the woodwork about them. So um, Tennessee, you know what happens when you, you make the announcement that you hired a guy and you have him, you and you're ready for this, and then the fans come back and they're like, uh, "Excuse me, no." Do you know what happens when you then turn your back on this guy and say, "Yeah, sorry, um, thanks, but no thanks. We're gonna have to go back on our word and basically um, fire you after we have hired you." You know what happens when you pull a stupid move like that, do you? You just made the list. So congratulations to the people of Tennessee and that front office and that whole college program. You are the next addition to the list of fan show. You just made the list! And that's twice that Tennessee has made the list. The Tennessee Titans for when they when they signed uh, Brandon Whedon and now Tennessee, the college program for uh, <laughs> doing the Graciano thing. It's been a great year for uh, for. Tennessee here on on the fan show I tell you why okay so but fumble or we had some uh, awesome nominees and uh, it was a bit of a quieter week but uh, the Tennessee situation was also a nominee but people weren't really feeling it so uh, obviously that means that they didn't win but here is uh, the nominees as nominated by you the people of fan nation and that is the tennessee shiano fiasco for the butt fumble award normally this goes to something within the nfl realm but we're not above reaching outside if there's something as equally golden <laughs> as there would be in the week of the nfl uh the giants and mcadoo and their decision to unceremoniously bench eli manning in favor of geno smith however you feel about that it's still just a, a bad mark a black eye on that program as well uh, the Jags losing to Blaine Gabbert in the highly anticipated, long-awaited revenge game for Blaine Gabbert. Revenge was his, and it was sweet, sir. <laughs> or Green Bay leaving time for Pittsburgh uh, late in that game. They could have pulled off the mother of all upsets this season. I'm not saying it would have been the biggest one, but, man, it would have been remembered that uh, Green Bay went into Heinz Field and pulled off the upset against a red-hot Steelers team. And they had Brett Hundley as their quarterback, and this was in prime time, my oh my. But the Steelers got it because they give them just enough time left on the clock. So, you voted, and the results are for your Week 12 Butt Fumble Award winner goes to... The New York Giants and Coach McAdoo. Congratulations for your fumble of a decision to bench Eli Manning unceremoniously after his 200 plus games of hard work and dedication to your organization you say so long happy trails welcome Geno Smith this has earned you the butt fumble award congratulations Giants and coach McAdoo you have earned it all right, folks, and that's going to do it for this Wednesday edition of The Fan Show. I'd like to thank you all once again for tuning in, taking some time out of your Wednesday night to hear me ramble on about football and nonsense and everything in between. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's episode or any other episode, you can always go and listen, uh, either a replay on WBLZ Sports, download that app because they are home to so many great shows, football, nonsense, and much, much more. But you can catch the podcast if you subscribe to either iTunes, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio. 
And then you can listen live on thefanshow.com or spreaker.com, and both of those have a show archive as well. Thefanshow.com has an archive all the way back to when we first started putting these up online. And then, of course, spreaker.com is where I've been since I switched over to doing live broadcasts as opposed to a pre recorded podcast. So that is where you can go to find me and hear my voice for as long as you want. Tomorrow is going to be another great show. Not sure who's going to be on yet, so it'll be a surprise, but we'll end my birthday week on a high note. I uh, can assure you that much. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at FanshowOfficial. Like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash FanshowOfficial. And then follow along on the Instagram and Twitter. Both are The Fan Show. Your home base, of course, for all things football and nonsense is TheFanshow.com. Teespring.com slash the fan show is the official merchandise store for the fan show. So I thank you once again for tuning in. Tune in same time, same place tomorrow night, right here on Spreaker.com or the fan show.com. And remember, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez? Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.